Hello, everybody, and welcome to Shauna Spillin, the Presley Tea. And I do have some tea to spill. It might be old information to some of you guys, but to a lot of you guys, I know you might not even know what's going on. So it's here. I'm going to spill it for you. My special guest a couple of weeks ago was Mindy Miller. And she was talking about the history with this woman. And a lot of you guys were like, who is this woman? Because we didn't say her first name. But in reality, we don't really need to. It's just Joe Esposito's ex-girlfriend. And she's going to be at Elvis Week this year. And a lot of us isn't happy about it. Um, a lot of y'all let your voices be heard and known. And EPE doesn't care. No matter how much we gripe, no matter how much you write, no matter how much you point out to, to them what they're doing that's wrong, they don't care. The sooner you guys realize this, the easier it will be on you guys eventually. I have basically, watching my hands, loving Elvis all the way, and just going that way. But with this show and some of the spilling, the tea shows that I have done for you and future shows, we like to dig into the past. We like to show you what you guys need to know. So that's what I'm doing tonight. I'm going to show you and tell you what to look out for with this Shirley lady. And that's what I'll say. I'll say her first name. But I really want to basically focus on what she's known for lately. And that's her book. So I'm probably just going to call her um, M.M. Princess because Memphis Mafia Princess is her book. And um, there's even a history about that. So that's pretty much what this show is going to be about. Um, it's going to be about Joe Esposito's ex-girlfriend, um, Shirley. It's about digging into some of her past. So when you guys do go to Elvis Week, and I know some of you all are planning it as of we speak, just know who you're paying a ticket for. And that's what this show is all about. Who are you paying a ticket to go see? Okay? So I'm going to start, first of all, and probably end up getting lost. So I'll start at the beginning. So the history of this lady starts in the past. So let, let's go into the past here to about probably 1971, I would say. So I'm going to go back that far. Let's see here. So here we go. There is a skeletons in everybody's closet. There are past experiences in everybody's life. And everybody has a past, right? So this is her past. Joe Esposito's ex-girlfriend, Shirley. Okay. She has skeletons in her closet like we all do. She was in at least two issues um, of a magazine. She publicly attempted to shame Mindy Miller for the same work that actually Shirley did herself. And I will show you some pictures of her work um, as we go. Also, people say she might have been underage in 1971 when she became a cocktail waitress in Las Vegas, but I really don't think that's the case. I think she was 18. I think she was of, of legal age, okay? But it was 1971, okay? She would brag about her time being in Las Vegas as a cocktail waitress, 18, 19 years old, because she says that she paid her own way. Until Joe Esposito found her. Now, as far as I know, Shirley Dew wanted to see Elvis. She had this feeling that she was going to meet Elvis. She planned her 
probably life at that time where she will meet Elvis. But in reality, when it was all said and done, Joe Esposito is the one that took pity on her being a cocktail waitress in Las Vegas. And, you know, put his arm around her and made her probably feel important and brought her into the world of Elvis. So that's how that went down. Plus the fact, I mean, I will be showing these photos to you. Um, she told people and Mindy Miller what she did was wrong. Yet the pot kel the pot calling the kettle black guys is she did it herself and was in magazines. So this is the first one where she's clearly showing a lot of her bosoms and being real playful and flirtatious. Uh huh. And here is the other one when it's just her in a bikini bottom showing her complete bare naked side and her side of her top. And this was all in a magazine called The Vegas Visitor. It was a little newsletter magazine. If you work there, they would showcase the girls. And this so happened to be Shirley's issue. So there will be a bigger one soon so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, this is what was really crazy about it, okay? People think she was underage. She looked really young. But we can't really prove that she was an underage cocktail waitress. So I will say she's 18. Just throw it out there. She's 18. And some early models at 18 is what time they would pretty much start their career, right? Well, Mindy Miller made a known fact that she was in show business her whole life. Even her parents were in show business. But with the uh, M.M. Princess. Shirley, she didn't have that available. She she wasn't even famous. She was just a cocktail waitress that they, you know, would put her on a newsletter to attract men into their business. Okay? And that's pretty much that on that front. So when she and her fans, and I'm saying her fans because only her fans would love her, but she and her fans have been arguing with Mindy Miller for years. And here's the thing. M.M. &M Princess knew Mindy Miller. They were friends. They knew each other because Mindy Miller was with Elvis at one time. Even for a short period of time, that's how she met Shirley. Okay. And then it just became all through the years they were friends until a falling out happened. See, M.M. Princess was writing her book, wanted her book to be really popular. Most Elvis books are. So in order to promote, she wanted to put Mindy Miller on the scene to go on social media to help her. Well, long story short, guys, because the tea is only so long, but what happened was Shirley, M.M. Princess, found out that people loved Mindy more than her. And jealousy happened, possibly. And that's where the falling out started. Mindy was more popular than M.M. Princess. Okay? Now, it took years. And finally, EPE has asked her, it's her turn to talk at Elvis Week. And I'm hoping and praying it doesn't give her an ego and a lot of other people too because they have seen her little bit of an ego in the past and it doesn't really, it doesn't come out well. But if she does get an ego, that is her business and her problem, right? It's not ours. But just know you guys are paying to see this woman. So be very careful, okay? Also, also, there's other things that has happened, and this is unbelievable. Okay, 
you'll love this one. Let me see if I can find it on my side so I don't have to look so hard. Okay, let me look on my phone so I don't have to look look so hard here. Okay, so um, I was watching uh, I was watching a podcast, an Elvis podcast, not very long ago, and. Believe it or not, the podcast was about a falling out of someone who knew Shirley, who supposedly was the one who loaned uh, M.M. Princess Shirley money to publish her book. So anyways, I was watching a YouTube Elvis Presley podcast, and I noticed the comments are being plastered all over the television. Now, in this is a conversation that was screenshotted and sent to this podcast to bring out the character of Shirley, M. M. Princess. Okay, so me being the me being the person I am, I took a screenshot of the screenshots, and I have them here, and I'm going to place them all in the back of this video when I get done. Okay, so you can. Um, see what I'm going to be reading to you, okay? Because it got pretty spicy, guys. This is between a woman named Sarah, and she's probably watching. And I asked her permission if I could um, use these after I took screenshots of them, but since it was public domain on a YouTube video to begin with, she did give me her permission. So I'm giving it out to you guys what I got from her. But I have to read this letter to you guys so you get an idea of Shirley M.M. Mafia's character, okay? M.M. Princess's character, excuse me. So this is from Sarah, supposedly her arch nemesis right now. So here you go. Hello, Miss Do. It's your former friend and arch nemesis, Sarah. You know, this letter exists. Gail was going to give me this letter before John Daly got his hands on it. Joe gave it to her for safekeeping. Joe and Gail were friends. Remember when you and Joe were in Memphis in 2014, staying at her house, and you gave her two Xanax tablets that she gave you because you asked? She would have never given those tablets to Joe on her own. She cared about him. Two tablets was too much. You almost overdosed Joe. Ask me how I know. What did you tell me on the phone when you called me and told me about giving Joe Esposito the Xanax tablets? Do you want to fill in the blanks? You had to change the sheets, didn't you? This is sad. This sounds like elder abuse, guys. Supposedly. Back to the letter. Gail accidentally gave John Daly the letter Gail was scared of you. Many people have seen this letter. It's being passed around behind closed doors. John won't sell it and let it out to the public because he's afraid of you and the abuse you hurl at people. I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid. Back to the letter again, she says. Um, I missed my point. I'm afraid of you at all. I know exactly who you are behind your mask. Don't pretend you and Priscilla are friends, because you are not. She outed you in 2022 when she told me, and she had nothing to do with your book, and didn't give you any special information about her relationship with Elvis. Neither you or Joe were in Memphis at the time that Ginger and Priscilla met. The both of you wrote as if you were standing right there watching the whole account. Both Ginger and Priscilla have outright denied what both you and Joe Esposito wrote about them. Your hatred for Ginger has left a long trail of destruction, relationships, and behavior that I've tried to clean up because I perpetuated that hatred by financing your book. You really ought to be ashamed of yourself for everything that you have done. 
worst in this. It gets worse, guys. But you won't because your pride is larger than the moon. With all the money you made off of my investment, the last thing you could have sent me was a thank you card for financing your book. Funny to see you're at Graceland this year. I guess your association with Sam Thompson paid off after all. I still have pictures of all of us at the Cheesecake Factory for your birthday and Joe Esposito's. We know how all this works now, don't we, don't we, Shirley? Joel brought you in. Priscilla had nothing to do with it. And that, guys, is written by Sarah, the woman that financed um, Shirley, M.M. Princess's book, and M.M. Princess's book never paid her back. Yeah. She owes her probably $20,000, made money off of her book, but never paid the Sarah lady back. That's wrong, guys. You're supposed to pay your debts. What is it? Shirley, you got to pay your dues. Pay your dues, girl. You know, you owe someone money. you got to pay them, right, guys? But anyways, that's, that's, that's what I got from, this, from, from the podcast um, and asked the Sarah lady to give. Also, there's other things. Um, there's a screenshot going around of Shirley Dew saying she hates Elvis fans. And this is not, this is not untruth. This is truth. I have the screenshot. I have the receipts, guys. And I'm going to play it for you um, on this video so you guys can see it. I do. I have, I have receipts, guys. It's crazy, but I do. So let me, let me look this up here so I can show you. And, you know, I've posted it on my site before, but I wanted to do a show just on the um, MM Princess to show you guys how much of a diva she really thinks that she is. Just just see. This is what it looks like. Okay. And you'll see it again in a minute while I'm reading it. The screenshot is a uh, Shirley writing to none other than Miss Sarah. And this is what it says. I hate all of this, and I'm sick of it, even selling my books. Have you looked at the BS on Amazon lately? I am writing to Amazon when I have the time. I am going to pinpoint everything in their rules. They say it's not allowed. I hate Elvis fans. I repeat, she wrote, I hate Elvis fans. Isn't it Elvis fans who are buying or have bought her book? Isn't it Elvis fans who have financed her? Hmm. You shouldn't bite the hand that feeds you, MM Princess. But I'm going to tell you the context. You'll see it in a minute. I'm going to tell you the context of this. The reason why Shirley, M.M. Princess, was upset and even wrote this to begin with, the She Hates Elvis fans, folks, is because she had to go, and I, I got this from a very reliable source who was there. The reason why she hates Elvis fans so much and wrote it in this message to um, Miss Sarah is because Memphis, Memphis, Mafia Princess had to go to the airport to ship her books to the people that bought her books. So, excuse me, you're telling me you hate Elvis fans, MM Princess, because they bought your books and you have to go ship their books to them. Is, is that correct? Is, is that correct, sweetheart? Really? Wow. Wow. I'm just saying, guys, who does she think she is? Elvis or something? Even Elvis wouldn't have been that way. So she's griping that she has to ship these books that Elvis fans bought from her and gave her money for. And she's griping because she has to ship them to the people that gave her the money for the books? Wow. That's crazy. Wow. 
Mm -mm -mm. Now, according to my lawyer, and I'm going to point it out there, I do have one. In this business, you've got to have one, guys, so you know what you can and cannot say. I can say her name. might not be complete first and last name, but I can say her name as long as there's truth and receipts to back it up. Defamation only happens if you say untruths about somebody. This is no untruth. This is getting it from the horse's mouth, per se, if the person was there, right, guys? So another thing that really got my interest here was she's going to be at Elvis Week with Sam Thompson and Linda Thompson, guys. So please be careful out there about Miss uh, Miss Memphis Mafia Princess. She wasn't even a Mafia member. Ain't nobody who's Memphis Mafia Princess. Elvis would have never allowed it. Just the fact she calling herself Memphis Mafia Princess helps us realize she must not have known Elvis too much because he wouldn't have liked that title very much to her book. And also the fact when she did do her book, she was trying really hard to look like Princess Diana, you know? <laughs> I don't know if that was going to help book sales or not, folks, but I'll put the bigger version up as well. But that's just crazy, guys. I mean, and that's not, I'm not even done. That's that's just some of it. There are some personal information, like how she is financially, um, where she lives, family, friends, how her children are, but. I am not that petty. I'm not going to dig into her personal past like that or her children or her financial debt or any of that. That's just petty. I don't have to do that. I just have to give you the receipts of what I'm reading to you right now, guys. So I'm not as petty as some people think. I'm not going to. I'm not going to dig into that. We can use other things, you know. But what really happened was is supposedly uh, Shirley wrote uh, a letter. And in that letter, she called Elvis a creep. I repeat, she called Elvis a creep. Well, this letter has supposedly ended up in John Daly's hands, and he will not part with it, no matter how much cash that you offer him, even for a Xerox copy of it. He says there's too much hate and division in the Elvis world as it is, so he's just going to sit on it, folks. But that's the information that I've got to give to you about that. But in the letter, she supposedly called Elvis a creep. So I'm thinking to myself, if she thinks Elvis is a creep, then uh, what the heck is she doing at Elvis Week? <laughs> you know what I'm saying, guys? So, I mean, there are multiple sources, and I we all worked and collaborated with each other to get this video out to you guys as a knowledge video to help you guys because I told you this before, and I'm going to tell you this again. Be careful who you put on a pedestal in the Elvis world, okay? These people are not Elvis. Yeah, they knew him, but that doesn't make them Elvis. So be careful in the Elvis world, okay? It's just so much hate that she had given Mindy Miller, so much hate she's given other people. Supposedly, Miss Shirley, Memphis Mafia Princess, has a bulldog, a bodyguard. He's some ETA guy. So be careful out there because she's got someone that can fight and felt that fight for her. And, you know, just like with, even prissy pants, there are people that will fight for even her. So she's got people that will fight for her. So you got to be careful, guys. Um, I have something else to show you. And this is also mind-boggling. So um, Shirley, Memphis Mafia Princess, was on the Dr. Phil show. That's right. Have you ever watched Dr. Phil, guys? I know I have. Well, Shirley, Memphis Mafia Prin Princess, was on the Dr. Phil show, and I'm going to read you this article. Oh, yeah. And there'll be a link and pictures and all stuff in this video as well when it gets done. Okay. Dr. Phil lawsuit. According to Shirley, 
Dr. Phil trapped me and touched my boob. Hmm. Yep. And this, this happened October 7th, 2009. So a, a while back, guys, this was in 2009. Dr. Phil is being sued by a woman who claims the TV shrink held her captive inside his production offices forced her to stare at a naked man and then grabbed her left breast. Wow. Are we talking about the same Shirley here? Uh-oh. According to the lawsuit filed today, the L.A. County Superior Court, a woman named Shirley D. claims she went to Phil to seek therapy in 2007. But instead, she claims the doc tried to brainwash her and force her to endure all sorts of physical and emotional abuse. Hmm. The doc, Shirley claims Phil, forced her to be in the same room with a completely naked, alive man while he exposed his entire naked body, genitals, and all. Wow. Shirley alleges she tried to escape the building but was blocked by the staff who prevented her from leaving. In the doc, Shirley also claims Phil touched her left breast during their therapy session. Shirley also claims Phil lied to her about being a real doctor, alleging that the TV shrink is not licensed to practice in the state of California. Shirley doesn't specify how much money she wants from Dr. Phil, but we're assuming it's an insane figure. Wow. And this happened in 2007, the article's in 2009, so many years ago. But I also have the, um, let's see, the document itself of the case. Hold on, let me see if I can't find it, guys. I'm looking. I think this is it. Yeah. It's such little print, but hopefully I'll make it bigger for you in this. But this is the court document of the filing. So let me see here. Shirley Dew, with her address, I'm not reading it. It, it filed in Los Angeles Superior Court, October 7, 2009. They claim that the actual, the action is unlimited civil case. The plaintiff, Shirley, sues, and as far as I know, she got maybe a little money out of it, but it wasn't as much as she wanted, and I don't think she was happy with what she wanted, but, you know, in reality, through the grapevine, they're saying Dr. Field didn't even touch her boob, that when the picture was took, he was just away from it, like, it wasn't touching, he was like, it was in midair. So some people say that he really didn't touch her boob. She saw that was unhappy with him because he called her a man hater. And that's another reason why a lot of us are questioning why she's being at Graceland during Elvis week this year. Excuse me. My eyes are getting watery again. But um, supposedly Dr. Phil called Shirley a man hater, a person that hates men. And if that is the case, then there would be a reason why she would sue him for what she did. And there would be a reason why she called Elvis a creep in a letter. But what's crazy is if this stuff is true, what in the world is she doing at Elvis Week, guys? What in the world is some people paying a ticket to see her for? You know, I did hear through the grapevine as well, because I love spilling the tea to you guys, that... um People say they're buying the tickets. They have to see Shirley, Linda, and Sam at the same time. And then some people say as soon as Shirley starts talking at this, um, in this place, that they're going to stand up and they're going to walk out right as she talks to make a public spectacle of it. So people pay attention like, why are they standing up during Shirley's talk? Well, it's because they're not happy. And I heard that that could happen. So you guys be careful. What?
Be careful who you put on a pedestal in the Elvis world. Okay, guys, they're not Elvis. They just knew him because they were lucky enough to know him. So be careful out there, guys. These people, they're not very nice. You know, things happen. They get in court cases. They try to sue people. They intimidate people. Mindy had to go through this for years, guys. And if you hear any of the background noises, no, it's my kid. He's playing a game. It's almost his bedtime, but um, I can hear him, guys. I can hear him. But I just wanted to tell you that's what you're hearing. Um, but this is just crazy stuff. I knew about this for a little while. I reached out to my friends that also was investigating um, Memphis Mafia Princess Shirley and I'm telling you straight up, it's not as you think it is. You know, it's smoke and mirrors like anything else. Um, but I wanted to give the facts out there to you guys so you know, know what happened. You know the past. You know what to look out for. You know what has happened at this point. Um, but anyways, I will dedicate this show to Miss Mindy. Thank you for being on my show. This is a gift for you. You've been wanting this, not just your show of telling people how um, you have felt all these years. Um, it's also a show to help your healing by showing what the past is of this lady that has been your tormentor for years. So I hope that you appreciate it, Mindy, because I really appreciate you being on my show and being able to do that. I want to say thank you to Sarah. I also want to say thank you to Darby for helping as well. Let me see some of your notes. I appreciate it very much. And I wanted to tell us something out there I haven't said, and it's been quiet for a while, but I wanted to give a shout out to my, my, my new editor and graphic person. Thank you so much. I appreciate you and all the time that you have helped and, and trained and just been there for me. Thank you very much. But know, guys, that I love y'all. I'm just looking out for you guys. I want you guys to know what to look out for. And remember, first and foremost, if you're not sure about anything, always do your own research and search for yourself, okay, and come up with your own conclusions. But, guys, just thank you again for letting me have your time this evening. You could have went to any Elvis channel tonight, but you didn't. You came to mine, and for that, I love you. I love you all for it. Thank you so much. And um, just one more thing out there, guys. God bless y'all. TCB, TLC, good night. And I'll see you on the other side. And I'll also, I'll see you next week on my next Spilling the Presley Tea. Mwah, mwah. Bye now. See y'all later. Be safe out there, okay, guys? Be very safe out there with these people. Whew. Anyways, guys, good luck. Uh, Elvis week. I'm going to be covering it as best as I can. So stick with this channel. We will be covering Elvis week. Okay, guys. Bye now.